In today's tutorial, we'll be using RayTK to create procedural noise patterns in 2D. Despite the name, RayTK can be used for a lot of things other than ray marching. We can use it to essentially create our own tops to produce or modify images. My recent tutorial about the kaleidoscope effect is an example of that approach. We'll be using the terrain noise field operator, which was added in a recent release though the general approach here applies to all sorts of field operators. We're using RayTK version 0.42, so just make sure you're using at least that version. Check the video description for a download link. The first step is to load the toolkit talks into your project. I like to do that at the root outside of the main project comp, since that avoids having a lot of these data connection lines all over the network, but you can put it wherever you like. Rather than using the ray marching renderer that we usually use, we're going to be sticking to 2D. So open the RayTK palette with Alt-R, and then type render 2D, or just R2, and create one of those, place it in your network. Then create a null top connected to that first output so you can see the rendered image. You can either right click it and choose view, or you can switch on the display flag to show it in the background, but I'm going to be using the side panel just so that things fit well in the recording. If you're curious about how this preview panel works, I recently posted a file on Patreon that includes this and a bunch of other tools that I use when making tutorials. Open the palette again with Alt-R and create a terrain noise field. And then connect that up to the render 2D. This operator produces 2D noise patterns using a few different variants of what's called fractal Brownian motion, or FBM. I'm not going to get into much detail about how these techniques work, but the general idea is that they combine multiple levels of noise at different scales. I've included a few links in the description to articles that cover them in more detail. The name terrain noise field refers to the fact that this type of noise works well for offsetting planes to produce mountains or other types of landscapes. There are a few different types of noise that this operator supports. For this video, we're going to be using the last one, Ridged Multi-Fractal. Let's take a look at the parameters. We aren't going to be changing the axis since that is more useful when you're dealing with this in a 3D scene, and we're just doing 2D, so we can keep that at Z. The translate and scale allow you to move the pattern on different axes or stretch it and shrink it. With the translation, you can keep going forever in any direction, and it's always going to keep producing continuous results. These parameters are equivalent to what's on the transform page of a noise top. We're going to skip over the fractal increment for now and talk about lacunarity, which I may be mispronouncing. Try changing that, and you'll notice how there is one base layer of the noise that's staying the same, but then this smaller layer that's getting added on top of it is shrinking down when we make this higher. This parameter is changing how much of a size gap there is between the different layers of noise. Set that to around the default of 2. Next is frequency, which is similar to scale, though it has some subtle differences that are less pronounced with this type of noise. But let's set that to around 3. Next, try changing the step offset. This is one of several parameters that emphasize different 
elements of the smaller scale detail layers. At low values or even negative, the pattern will sort of invert itself with dark ridges on a light background. Set this to around 0 0.9. Then try the gain. This also emphasizes the detail of the smaller scale layers filling in some of those dark areas. Set this to around 2.5. Next, try the octaves, which controls the number of layers of noise. It can be a little bit hard to differentiate between higher values of this, like 4 and 6 look pretty much the same, but when you go down to lower values, it can be a little bit more obvious what's going on. It also uses the fractional amount of this, so between 2 and 3, to further emphasize some of those uh, smaller layers. Last, there is the amplitude and offset. Similar to on a noise top, these control the range of values that are produced. By default, this operator produces values that center around zero, and depending on the other settings, might go to a range of negative one to positive one, or might actually go beyond that range but let's leave these here on the defaults. One of the neat things about this and most other noise and pattern operators in Rate TK is that it supports replacing most of the parameters with values that come from another operator used as an input field. That allows it to have different settings in different places. We'll start by doing this for the fractal increment. Open the palette with Alt-R and create a noise field. And then mouse over the inputs on the terrain noise field to find the fractal increment one and connect that up to the noise field. It can be a little bit difficult to see what exactly is going on there. So on the noise field, try changing the translate to move it side to side. To make this effect more pronounced, increase the amplitude to around 2, and then bring up the offset to around 1. We can use the translate parameters here to move that pattern, but it's fairly obvious visually when you're looking at if it's moving in one direction or another that it's kind of scrolling by. If we want to add some variation to this that doesn't look like it's moving in a particular direction, we can use the z-axis. But first, we need to change the type of noise that we're using. So the one that we're using currently is just 2D. So switch that to simplex 3D. And now we have the z-axis that we can use, which causes the pattern to shift, but it's not really moving in a particular direction, at least that we can see visually. We'll animate this later on. Next, we'll do something similar for the step offset parameter. Open the palette and create a wave field. And then find the step offset input and connect it up to that. You can try changing the axis or even the wave type there, but I actually like it at the defaults of a sine wave on the x-axis, so I'm going to leave that. And you can try changing the phase to shift that across the pattern. We'll animate this later on. Then you can use the amplitude and offset to control the range of values that it's producing. So I'm going to set it to around 0.6 for the amplitude and then around 0.4 for the offset. Now let's take another look at the parameters on the train noise field. With fields connected to these inputs, it should actually be disabling those corresponding parameters but due to a bug in 0 0.42, it doesn't. But if you try changing 
the step offset, for example, it's not going to do anything because it's now using the field instead. Let's go back to the translate parameters. So now if we use those, we can see how that noise pattern with the ridges is moving, but the fields that are controlling it are staying in place. If we want the ability to move all of it together, we can add a translate operator afterwards to open the palette and create a translate, and then insert that after the terrain noise field. Then on that, you can change the translate and the whole thing moves together. We can also insert other types of transform filters. To get a kaleidoscope effect, open the palette and create a modulo polar and insert that after the translate. Then change the mirror type to mirror. If you want to have this be horizontally symmetrical, we can do that with the rotate parameter using an expression. It's going to be 180 divided by me.r repetitions with a capital R. So now you can change the number of repetitions, and it's always going to maintain that horizontal uh, symmetry. So note that this is for using mirroring. You need to have an even number here. So if we had seven, we'd get kind of cut off half part there. So just make sure to use an even number. Though after all that, I actually kind of like this without, so I'm just going to toggle that off using the enable parameter here. But you can leave it on or swap it out if you like. Lastly, let's add some animation. Select the terrain noise field and open RayTK's editor tools menu with Alt Shift R. And then under Animate with Speed, choose Translate. Then on the speed generator, we can use the first two parts of the speed here to control how much it's moving on each axis. And then we can use the slider to control the overall speed. Then go over to the wave field that's controlling the step offset, select that. And we're going to repeat the process, Alt-Shift-R, animate with speed. And this time, we're going to choose phase. Then you can adjust the speed however you like there. Then we're going to do the same thing over on noise field here. So select that, Alt-Shift-R, animate with speed, choose translate. And for this one, we can use the first three parts of here, the X, Y, and Z. And that's it for this scene. To recap, we're using the Render 2D to produce 2D images using a terrain noise field. We're controlling the fractal increment of that with a noise field that's using 3D simplex noise. Then we are controlling the step offset with a wave field using a sine wave on the x-axis. Then we're using a translate to move the entire thing. And if you want, you can stick animation on that. Then we have modular polar, which switch that back on gives us a kaleidoscope effect. Finally, we are using speed generators to animate parameters. And we created those using RayTK's Editor Tools menu with Alt-Shift-R. There are lots of ways you could expand on this. You could swap in different fields to control the different parameters, or try different noise types, or you could use this as an offset on a 3D surface in a Raymarsh scene, or use the render output as a texture on SOP-based geometry. Anyways, I look forward to seeing what you all do with this one. If you post on social media, use the RayTK hashtag. And at least on Instagram, you can tag me if you want to show off your work. 
Thanks for watching. If you want to support RayTK development, subscribe to my Patreon. You'll get early access to tutorials, scene file downloads, access to the Discord community, and a bunch of other stuff. And even if you don't want to pay, you can still subscribe for free as a way to get announcements about the toolkit. Feel free to reach out if you have questions. I'll put links for that in the video description. Anyways, thanks for watching and make sure to like and subscribe.